All right, so welcome. In this video, we're gonna be making an architectural facade and apply it to our current building project that we're working on. This can be applicable to any project you're working on. If you just wanna know how to make an actual facade, I've included it in this series as we go about uh, making our own dream house. We're gonna do something very similar. Uh, you would do an Archicad using complex profiles. Now this is where you create the facade in 2D lines and then extrude it into 3D. So firstly, we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer and just call it facade. You wanna make sure that your facade is on a different layer because it can get quite uh, complicated as you have so many different elements. And we're gonna go into top view. Now I've got some example just as a reference of what we're gonna be making. So we're gonna create something like this using our lines. So think of this as viewing the facade in a section. You've got the facade on your building along like that and you cut a section through it and then you look at it from the angle that you've cut. And so this is what it looks like when you look at it in cross section. I'm sure you're familiar with what a cross section is. So we're gonna go and use our rectangle tool. Usually a facade is about 500 mils of articulation. It depends on what kind of building. We go 500 by the building height, which is 2.8. These are just a couple of reference profiles from another project that I'm gonna use. But we're gonna break this up into sections. So when you have a facade, we're doing like a kind of contemporary modern facade. We'll go ahead and quickly just get a reference. So we're gonna be doing, you know, this kind of contemporary modern looking facade. Do you see a lot of contemporary buildings have an entire wall section of just glass and then either a solid section. So we're gonna be making two profiles, one of glass and then one of just a completely solid wall but with a bit of articulation on it, you know, something similar to this. So the glass facade is actually pretty, um, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this a little bit down to maybe, it can be quite loose. It's about that wide, so it's about 160 wide, which is fine. We'll go use our square tool, I wanna make, um, the bottom part of this facade to have an actual spandrel. This is where the glass connects to the ground. So use our rectangle tool. And you want to create something similar to this, like um, half of an I-beam or just something sticking out the front uh, to actually capture the glass. So we'll make these two top sections. You know, if you want to get really detailed, you can measure out every single thing that you place so they have accurate measurements but as this is not for construction i'm not too worried about that so you got one there and then we'll do the same thing for the top you can just highlight those use alt and drag and i want to add a little bit of articulation on the top so move this up and then maybe Put a bit of a dip in there. Then use trim and go ahead and join all these together. So you can get quite creative with what kind of facade you want, but I'm gonna try and keep it um, reasonably basic, this one, just so you can get an understanding of what we're actually doing. Then glass is generally 20 mils thick, so we're 20, and then just click there and move our glass in and scale this up. Depending on what kind of building you're doing, a lot of skyscrapers have different sections of glass within it. Like you'd have a bottom glass section here and then an upper section of glass, which is separated with like a manual louver above it or something like that. But we're gonna keep it real basic for now. I'm just gonna add one louver to the top section. And you see on like a massive skyscraper, you'd have lots of different sections, like a separate balcony section for the glass, but we're just gonna keep it really basic for this one and make this our profile. So we can go ahead and delete that guideline. And so this part is the glass here that you'll see through. This is the top and bottom spandrel, which captures the glass. So now we wanna make a solid section. So we're gonna go make our solid wall there. This is very basic. 
And then if you want to have a smooth transition between the glass and the solid wall, you want to retain these top and bottom spandrels. So we'll go ahead and delete that. So that the only thing that's changing is the actual glass within it. And you get a smooth transition between the spandrels. So this will be our solid wall section. Go ahead, put this down. Yeah, so our wall is about 40 mils, that's probably a bit thin. You want your wall to stick out a little bit further than the glass so that the wall can capture the glass when you transition between uh, the solid wall. Then I'm going to go ahead and retain this louver. Hold down shift, then tab. Then I'll keep that louver there. Now I want to add a little bit of detailing onto here. So we're going to go ahead and add another square and then make it about, say 10 by 10. Then we'll use a single line and bring this down. And we're going to array our little detail along this line. Go ahead and delete that one, delete that line. See, now we have these little grooves, which um, will really show up and give it a lot of texture and detail uh, within the actual 3D. What you can also do is do the opposite of this, which actually I might do. We go ahead and select all of these that we have arrayed. And then just move it inside. I'll go ahead and delete this one. And we're going to select all of these and then type in trim. Now it's going to trim the outer curve like so. So we've got now we've got little grooves within our wall. It's a really minor detail, but it gives it uh, a lot of character, a lot of realism once we turn this into 3D. Then make sure you press escape and then join. So now we've got one closed curve there. Alright, so now we've got our profiles done. These are our two simple profiles. I'm going to go back into our perspective view and now we're going to turn our facade into 3D. You can separate the layer by material, so say we want two separate materials for this. We want a bronze and a sandstone. So we can go for a new sublayer under our facade and say one for bronze. And then one for sandstone. This just helps apply the materials easier. Say if we're going to export it into Unreal Engine or a rendering software, it always helps to separate your layers by material. So the sandstone section will be this section. So we'll just extrude this. See, it might look a bit weird with this louver on it, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We'll just say by 2 meters for now. We can always rescale this once we're ready. Then we'll make this louver sandstone as well. Maybe these interior details will be sandstone also. Then you're going to switch to bronze or your other material and just select the rest and extrude these. And finally, we'll go onto our glass window layer and just extrude our glass. So there we go. Now we have our profiles. We can go ahead and move these off the line and then rotate them to the correct orientation. You can either turn these into a block instance or in this case I'm just going to go ahead and group it for now. Same with these. You want to make sure all of your materials are set to display color by layer and that the material is set to use layer material. So now that we have our profile we're going to go ahead and move this onto our floor. And using scale 1D, let's 
Go ahead and drag that along. Then the same thing for this side. You will have to cap the glass at some point. Uh, now if you're using ArchiCAD or another program, it'll automatically cap this for you, but that's something we have to manually do it within Rhino. It's a little bit annoying, but. So now we're adding our transition zone to the wall. So you see it looks a bit funny at the moment because we have no millions set. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup these. Now to cap these you can do a few different things. I'm just going to bring these out and connect those like that. And then do the same thing for these two. Now to cap this end, which would be by using the square tool like that. Then going ahead and lofting this. You have to kind of... Make sure that the curved directions are going the same way so that it lofts correctly. And go ahead and extrude this top one. So that's how you kind of cap it up there. And then same thing with the glass. Let's bring those out. And there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and add a mullions layer. This uh, separates the glass. You know, all real buildings have mullions on them to turn the glass into sections. So we'll jump into plan real quick. And a mullion is, okay, they can be different sizes, but it's usually about the size of this kind of spandrel area. And we'll say, say it's about 80 by, I don't know, 25. Go ahead and move this. I'll just change the scale of it a bit. That only needs to go right up to that glass. Just so your million is just capturing that glass. Then we can go ahead and use extrude, bring that down. Then we want to create a new curve that's just the distance of your current facade or the current wall you want to add these to. Then we'll select the mullion and type in array curve. Then select your line that we just put down. You'll see it's now created the mullions. We can go ahead and change. Usually the distance between mullions is anywhere between 800 to maximum about 2 meters or 1.8. You can just try the different distances and see what you think looks good. Press enter. Usually you want to keep an even distance so that at the corner you have a one million. So in this case, you just want to play around with the distances so that you can see once it reaches the corner, it's at a kind of even distance. In this case, we'll just go at two meters, which is quite long, but I'm going to go ahead and add one to the corner of the glass. You can always adjust it if you want to get into detail, but from a distance, I think it looks all right. And we'll go ahead and repeat the same for this side. So same actions. Go ahead and add in a curve. And then just array it along that curve. And again, you need to adjust your distances slightly so that they are consistent. But to make this easier, I'm just going to go ahead and select this side of the house. And we're just going to mirror it to the other side. So 
So we use our mirror tool. So you do one side and you can just easily mirror it to the other side if you want it to be exactly the same. You just give it simple. I won't add the capping to that at the moment. We'll go ahead and put our roof on. Just extrude that surf to make, extrude the surface. Just give it a bit of thickness. The roof will be about 200, probably a bit more than that, but turn that down. Now we're gonna go into our rendered view and we're gonna set up the actual materials. So, you can do this by clicking onto your layer and then where it says material, we can actually set the material. So we set glass earlier. Go ahead and press OK. You can also add a bit of tint to your glass to make it a bit of a Give it a bit of tint and reflectivity, which makes it look nice in the Rhino render view. So we're going to go to our bronze material. We're going to make a new one. Our bronze is kind of shiny, so we'll make it a metal material. We'll go color. Just give it a kind of orangey bronze look. In Rhino Material Creator, you don't actually have reflectivity options for the metal material so we're going to instead use plastic because you can adjust the reflectivity you just want to adjust the color so it doesn't look too much like plastic you can always change the reflectivity or the transparency and turn that down a bit and press ok as you see now that's created our bronze accents anything you want out anything else you want to change to bronze you can just Select it and change it to that layer. Now we're going to go ahead and make our sandstone. We'll use the plaster material as there's no reflectivity on this. And just make it a simple sandstone color. You can always change the color of your interior walls or your ground. But there we go, that's this tutorial on how to make a really simple architectural facade. If you want the full actual model that I've created, I'm going to make it available on my website, The Architecture Elite, down below. But um, I hope this tutorial is helpful, and that's just how to create an architectural facade within Rhino.